This Thanks Grilling series, it's going to be huge. You can't miss out on this. Not this one. Shoot yeah, those Kingsford pellets provide the best flavor. Oh yeah. Let's get it started. Happy holidays, everybody. I'm Chef John, and today I'm going to be showing you a handy trick for that leftover mac and cheese. That's right, we're gonna be doing some mac and cheese bite. Now this recipe is a beautiful recipe to do with the whole family. So what we did earlier is bake off a delicious mac and cheese on the Rectech using those Kingsford hickory pellets. Man, this thing came out delicious. So we had a little bit of leftover mac and cheese left. So I figured, why not show y'all a handy trick to make some delicious bites with the kids? Okay, so the first step in this is we're just gonna make some macaroni balls, if you will. It's gonna be the same process as making meatballs, you know? You're just gonna get about an ounce in your hand. And really how you could tell is, I like to just fill the palm of my hand up, just the center palm part of my hand. I know that's gonna be the proper size, and that way I can ensure they'll all be pretty much the same size. So we're just gonna make a nice little macaroni cheese ball, just like that, all right? And then we're gonna repeat the process. So now that I've got these mac and cheese bites all rolled out, the next step in this process is getting them cool. You wanna put them in the freezer for at least an hour, up to a day, you can make these a day ahead of time, and pull them out. You want them to be nice and cold for the next step. All right, holiday fam. I had those mac and cheese bites in the freezer for about three hours. Now you can leave them overnight in the freezer, get them nice and cold. The colder, the better it's gonna be for frying. But once we got them to this stage, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our battering station made up, right? So what we have here is some panko, a little bit of regular flour, and three eggs. That's right. All right, so we're gonna crack the eggs, mix this up. Make sure all the yolks are nice and broken. Perfect. Now we're gonna hit it with a little bit of water, make an egg wash. Perfect. That's how you make an egg wash? Yeah, and that's how you make an egg wash. Equal parts water and egg, and then just mix. So now we have our egg wash all mixed up. I'm gonna go ahead and take some of that heifer dust, often imitated, never duplicated heifer dust, which you can find at rectech.com. Just scroll on over there to the sauce and spice section and pick some up. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and add some heifer dust to our flour, because I don't know where you get your flour, but mine does not come seasoned. So we're gonna put about three tablespoons of flour in there. Right, we're gonna give it a little mix. Just a little finger mix, it's okay. All right, now this is the order you want to do this in, right? You want to go flour, egg wash, panko. That's the order. Always the same way every time if you're cooking for the president, you're cooking for your Aunt Martha, you're cooking for your best friend, you're cooking for Jesus himself. This is how you do it. Flour, egg wash, panko. Those are the correct steps. Okay, so we have a clean half sheet pan. So we're gonna take our mac and cheese bites. We're gonna drop three at a time. We're gonna roll them around, right? Making sure that the flour covers everything. We're gonna knock them off. Now, this is the other key about breading, right? What you wanna do is you wanna have one hand for dry and one hand for wet. One hand for dry. One hand for wet. So whenever I'm touching a dry mixture, I'm gonna use my left hand. Whenever I'm touching a wet mixture, I'm gonna use my right hand. And that's gonna help me not to get a huge mess all over the place. That's how the pros do it. A little pro tip from Chef John to you for the holidays. Who says I don't give you guys anything? All right, so that's the wet hand. We're gonna go back with the dry hand. We're gonna shake it around first. Go back with the dry hand. Now, another chef's secret. We're gonna let this sit in the panko for just a minute to really absorb every little bit of panko that we can get on there, all right? Guys, I would love to know what you guys are looking forward to eating this holiday season. Please put it in the comment section. I'd love to find out. Excellent. Now that we have the mac and cheese bites totally breaded in the panko, we're gonna bring them out to the RTG 450 that I have set at 350 degrees, perfect temperature for frying. 
Come on, let's go. All right, holiday family, I have pulled off these mac and cheese bites and they look scrum diddly umptious. I mean, take a gander at these puppies right cheer. GBD, golden brown delicious. We cooked them on the RTG 450. I had the thing set at 350 degrees and it did a wonderful job, right? Are you guys happy? Because I'm happy. We're gonna go ahead and put these in our basket. Guys, these were so much fun for me to make for y'all. I hope you guys have as much fun making them with your family for the holidays. I'm Chef John, wishing you guys a happy holidays, and we'll see you at the Rec Tech. Jody, I got your mac and cheese bites.